sports. If you want to be the best, there are no off days. Welcome into the No Off Days podcast. Scott Smith here alongside Chris Cato. BK is in the booth, and we are kicking off another big show. You know, the Rays' pursuit of perfection has sadly come to an end, but I think today we're going to pursue perfection. We're going to take that mantle. I don't know. Has there ever been a perfect podcast? We come to work every day trying to achieve perfection. perfection. So how, is, how, is, how is this any different? Yeah. We're, that's always the goal, right? Well, I'm looking to you. <laughs> you have to do your part. Well, I'll try my best I'm going to do, do like the Rays and fall apart when I get to Toronto. No. <laughs> oh, man. Rough little stretch that yeah. we're in right now for this team. Uh, but they're still sitting atop the standings. You know, I guess we'll we'll have to start chasing after the 1884 St. Louis Maroons now. Somebody catch those Maroons. Yeah. Have you looked at the roster of those guys? I'm sure the names are named, great. They named people different back then. There was Sleeper Sullivan, Buttercup Dixon. Buttercup. I uh, love that. M- Milt Whitehead. So these no, are uh, Milt got the short end of the <laughs> stick on the nicknames. <laughs> Is there anybody in like under the age of forty named Milt? I, uh, uh, probably. I, I don't know, but I always <laughs> thought a maroon. It wasn't a maroon. What Bugs Bunny called people yeah, to what, insult them? What a but, maroon! Yeah, what a maroon! Yeah, well, we're a couple of morons. Uh, <laughs> we just juxtapose some of the letters. Yeah. Uh, let's bring in BK and uh, Brian. We have to kind of fly in this show a little bit because. We, we have a packed, uh, a packed show, don't we? A full show today. Yeah, we do. We got uh, starting off with Jessica Mendoza, yep. baseball right. analyst. She's going to talk to us about the uh, – give us her thoughts on the Tampa Bay Rays and their great start this season. Then Taylor Swift was a hard ticket to get last week. This ticket may be even more difficult to get. The Savannah Bananas coming to town next week. Wow. Yeah, yeah. They are. They and have the hottest ticket. We ate bananas last week on we the did. show. We, we could have brought some more. Full circle here. Yeah. Uh, Kyle Luigs is coming in. Well, okay. talk to us. And uh, he's a pitcher, the cowboy pitcher for his team. He's going to tell he us He wears a bit. the cowboy hat. Yeah. yeah. Better Pretty name cool. than Buttercup Dixon. Here. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen the Savannah Bananas, Chris? O- only in viral videos. Yeah. But they, they put on a good show. That's their thing, right? They yeah. set their bats on fire. They run around. And They're the Harlem Globetrotters yeah. of baseball. And they do. They, they have, But they have a whole different set of rules that they play by. It's not traditional baseball rules. Although – the level of play is actually pretty impressive. Uh, I mean, a lot of these guys played, you know, pro ball or college ball, and uh, and every once in a while they actually get former professional athletes to come out, perform, professional baseball players to come, kind of showcase in in their shows. So we'll see. Maybe maybe they'll bring a couple out for Tampa. Right. That'd be uh, fun. But they had to add. They added like an extra show because it was like the so it just demand. went so it went so quick. So yeah, Taylor Swift and the bananas. <laughs> That's what we're all about here in Tampa, man. Sounds like a good tour. Okay, very good. And at the end of the show? In the show, uh, got a special guest joining us. Uh-oh. In studio. Is this be- a mystery guest? It'll be a mystery guest, yes. Okay. Someone Kidding. that you may know, someone that's got a kind of a sports <laughs> knowledge background. If I don't know them, this is going to be really weird. It will right. be quite we, awkward. We'll spend One of those run-ins you have in the office where you see someone hey. from the sales department <laughs> yeah. you haven't uh, seen in like two years. Hey, hey how's, what, how are the kids? What's, what's going on I don't in your have world? kids. Yeah. Yeah. It's a new of course you don't. Story. That was a joke. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm be sure fine. we'll recognize him. Okay. Special guest at the end of the show. Right. All right. Sounds good, BK. We'll catch up with you in just a little bit. Well, if you're listening and you want to watch, go to fox13news.com slash nodpod. If you're watching and you want to listen uh, or subscribe, take out your phone, zap the QR code on the screen in the bottom right-hand corner. There you will find the perfect pairing of both sports talk and levity, hard-hitting interviews, and irreverent babble. (laughs) Kind of like bacon and eggs, peanut butter and jelly, hot dog and ketchup. Oh, no. no. Okay. All right. I no. thought okay, I was waiting. <laughs> All right. Please subscribe. Fox13news.com slash nodpod. I think we are a little bit inspired, Chris, by the pitch clock in baseball. I noticed right? you did that pitch, your pitch for the podcast, uh, in record time. Everything I'm doing, I'm trying to do it with Usually a little bit more Usually you drag that urgency. baby out. Yeah, I you know. You milk it, but not this week. Yeah. No. So I think that, you know, part of the pitch clock in baseball is that people don't want the lulls. They don't want the, the, the parts of the game that really start to drag. Yes. And so – I don't know. Don't you feel like we could apply that to our podcast a little bit? Yeah. You know, every week when I go back and listen to this, as I do five or six times in pursuit of perfection, I think, (laughs) boy, I really dragged that point out too long. I was trying to make about it was the perfect amount of drag. It was it was terrible. So I think we need to tighten things up. We're going to we need to tighten things up starting today. We are going to implement a pitch clock and put it on ourselves. So it's like our hot take clock. 
Yeah, you could call it okay. that. Well, the yeah, marketing Talker clock. Marketing will work on a better name. Okay. But we're going to put a clock on ourselves. Now, 15 seconds like a, the pitchers have when there's not a runner on base, that's probably a little too tight. We still need to give people some substance, some content. So let's say uh, – I don't think they're here for that. <laughs> Please tell us what you're here for. Uh, uh, now, let's, let's give ourselves a minute. I think that's generous. Certainly we can cover these – scintillating topics in 60 seconds okay all right so we're gonna go through as many headlines as we can in a minute yes all right we ready all right chris griffin uh you're gonna set the timer and here we go all right so the nhl playoffs are kicking off this week in fact last night uh, a few of the games already hit ice but tonight it's the lightning it's the leafs um you know, I know the Bruins and the Avs, they're kind of like the favorites. They had great regular seasons. It doesn't seem like anybody's going to be able to beat Boston. But I think people are sleeping on the three-time Eastern Conference champs, the Lightning. And, and reason for that, I mean, they went nine, I, I believe it was nine, 11, and two since March 1st. So they have not played their best hockey. But there's something about the postseason with this team, and we saw it last year. Just, they're able to flip a switch. They have enough talent. So how much does experience matter once the playoffs come around? I think it means a lot, Chris. It matters a ton, and they're playing in Toronto where they've played well before, and we know what the Maple Leafs tend to do in the playoffs. They tend to choke, so it wouldn't surprise us at all if the Lightning go up there and, and take a couple in Toronto and come back and, and win some in Tampa. Well, the last time Toronto won a playoff series, that was 2012. So I think that once they get behind in the series, I think that might start messing with them. In Vassy, we trust. Moving on. All right, Jalen Hurts mm. signing a five-year, $255 million contract, Chris. This is uh, it's a lot of money. It's uh, 180 of that is guaranteed. He was an MVP candidate last season. He balled out. He earned that contract. He led the Eagles to the Super Bowl. And guess who doesn't have a contract yet? Mr. Jackson. Mr. Lamar Jackson. Yeah. So – this, how do you feel like this sets up for him? Because you always look at contracts that are going to help you, right? They're, they're going to kind of – everybody kind of gains when the next guy makes a lot more money. Sure. But does this actually help Lamar Jackson? No, this sets the market for Lamar. Philadelphia is a smart, well-run organization. That's why they did this now. They wanted to set the market before Lamar went and got a deal. So, it's really, true. I think it pins Lamar to a number, and the other guys that are coming up, Burrow, Herbert, I think it pins them to a number two. 70% of Jalen's contract is guaranteed, and so I think that's what you're going to look at now as you're setting the mark for these other guys. Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert, these guys are not going to get guaranteed money. No. And so, it, yeah, while it sets a, a new average salary per year, very high, yeah. it's, you know, the problem is, sorry, and I'm running out of time, is that it does not hit on the main point, which is the guaranteed contract. It's time to come to the signing table, Lamar Jackson. All right, Blue Jays pitcher Anthony Bass. Uh, he went to Twitter complaining about an airline uh, because his wife recently took their two young kids on a flight and the kids kind of littered the aisle way with some popcorn and some, you know, debris. Yeah, these, are kids are, these are toddlers. As kids are known yeah. to do. So what does Bass do? He was not with his wife, by the way. She was flying solo trying to wrangle these two kids. Right. Heart goes out to her. My wife has been there. I understand. And she's struggle. pregnant, as he and points she's out. she's pregnant. And yet the flight attendant said, hey, miss, do you mind cleaning up after your kids? They th he thought that was so outrageous that he actually took to Twitter and, it, and backlash, man. Big yes. time. Yes. Yeah. He's getting dragged because people are saying, hey, they're your kids. Or in this case, your wife's kids, too. I don't think people understood that he wasn't on the flight at the time. But, yeah, a lot of uh, he's getting blasted for not being responsible for picking up your kids' messes. And I get that, That's too. That's the job, right? Yeah, you got to pick up after your kids. I think this is the number one problem. Don't go to Twitter to blast someone right. because when you do, this is what happens. The Twitter world comes after you. Twitter is not a nice neighborhood. But no. I, do, I, I do think the flight attendant should have seen that she was pregnant and not done that. So I'm not letting the flight uh, – yeah. I'm not letting the airline – You ask that question next time. Ma Ma'am, are you pregnant? I think it was obvious. I think it was obvious. Um, anyway. All right. Zdeno Chara, uh, longtime enforcer in the NHL. Big man. He just completed the Boston Marathon, Chris. He did it in three and a half hours. So impressive. I don't think I could have skated the Boston Marathon in three and a half hours. And this guy it just transitioned from one sport to the next. What a feat it, it is to be able to complete it for anybody, but for a guy that's not like a skilled, trained, long-distance runner. What's the first former NHL player I've heard of, of doing this? Maybe there have been others, but usually it's someone who we've seen uh, some basketball players do it, some other guys that – 
have great cardio and gals too. But yeah, this was incredible by him. And he didn't leave any um, surprises in anyone's yards. Yeah, at that's least right. Not that we know of. <laughs> not every runner coming out smelling like roses. Uh, yeah, there was actually somebody picked up on a ring cam that deposited a little something in somebody's front yard. But this is all, this has been the thing. Like marathon runners, like they, I've seen signs like in the crowds of like the New York City Marathon where it says like, don't poop your pants. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, or because it happens a lot. Apparently, you know, like all the running, the 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 sure. inflammation of the of the uh, gut can the, happen while you're running, and hey, it becomes there, a dicey, explosive situation. There's a condition <laughs> called runner's trot. It's a real thing. I've never had it because I don't run. That's exactly why I won't run. All right. And there is uh, speaking of funny smells. Remember uh, Oakland Coliseum back in the day? They had. Uh, I mean, this was a few years ago. They had like a sewage issue in their opposing team's dugout, and like it, people couldn't go in. And the smell was so atrocious. Well, now <laughs> there there is a, a possum living in the walls of the visiting team's broadcast booth. Yeah, so bad that that the opposing team the other day could not broadcast from that location because of this possum. Apparently, possums are runners too because this thing's been also going to the bathroom in there. And yeah, the Mets <laughs> broadcasters couldn't do it. Uh, it's made other appearances, and the fans, you know, the six fans that come to these A's game right. have named it Rally Possum. I've got some suggestions though if we're gonna really adopt the possum. I love possums. They're uh, North America's only mars. Supule. They eat a lot of ticks. So if we're going to name it, let's name it after great A's. I've got Ticky Henderson okay. uh, would be number one. Raleigh Hangers because they hang upside down. Mm -hmm. Or my favorite, Mark Supule McGuire. Oh. Let's give the possum a real name. Okay. Well, I hate possums. Uh, I don't think it should have taken but five seconds to exterminate this guy. And no. A's are three and 14. It's not much of a rally possum. <laughs> possums are great. No, awful. You can't exterminate giant, them. Giant hissing rats. You're going to get right, Lyme right. disease we, from a tick. We are out of time it's time now to move on to the first of two guests we have on the show let's talk a little baseball with our first guest all right chris let's welcome in our guest uh, a former team usa softball player now mlb analyst we welcome to the nod pod jessica mendoza thank you for joining the nod pod today jessica you know uh, you're joining us today to talk also about financial literacy and how that applies to college athletes and some of whom of course are now gaining money from nil deals and it's kind of an ever-evolving uh, issue for for young college athletes uh, give us a, a little bit of per perspective as to why this is such a, a key topic right now I mean, you nailed it with student athletes getting paid more money, really money that didn't exist before, even just two years ago. And now it's there. But I even think about regular students and how they are getting targeted more by corporations, whether it's social media content, really high powering internships. That is an age group that is getting paid more money now than they ever have before. And they're just not as financially literate. I mean, shoot, none of us were. I graduated college and I had no idea about what to do with that first paycheck. But can you imagine being 18, 19 years old, making significant money, but also having zero clue on what to do with it? And this is a situation, too, where, I mean, you kind of you need people to come around you as a young athlete and kind of point you in the right direction. Right. Because there can be a predatory aspect of this as well. Right. Well, yeah, and I think there's a lot of people that are trying to point in all kinds of different directions. For me, it's more about a trusted source because yeah. that's what's scary, especially with NIL. I've never seen more people want to get involved, of course, and a lot of it's selfish reasons. It's also trying to gear you towards something you shouldn't be involved in. And so that's why I'm excited, excited to partner with Invesco QQQ because it's a trusted source. I mean, this is someone that you understand knows the financial background. Plus, they're trying to make it a lot more creative to be able to reach that audience. So even if you have a Stanford degree, <laughs> uh, it, it probably pays to be involved with people that are going to point you in the right direction. Uh, jo so Jessica, give us your thoughts so far on, you know, we're a couple weeks into the baseball season now, and uh, there have been some storylines that have emerged, and one of those happens to be the team here in our neck of the woods in the Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, your thoughts on how they kind of busted out of the gates off to that incredible start. Okay, so since we're speaking about financial literacy, is there a more financial <laughs> right. literate team than Tampa Bay Rays? I mean, taking segue. advantage yeah. of small payroll, being able to maximize, and, and everyone talks about, of course, the, big, the the trades that they make that seem so small, but they're able to kind of find these gems and other teams, bring them over, they're superstars. What doesn't get a lot of attention for Tampa Bay Rays, and I love that it is now because 13-0, breaking records, 
1884 was like the last team, St. Louis Maroons, is their development. If you look at the minor league level in the Tampa Bay Rays organization, they have won first or second place at every single level for the last five years. That is mind blowing. It's never been done and it doesn't get the attention it deserves. I feel like because these aren't just first round draft picks. Yes, there's a few of those and we've seen them now make it to the majors, but it's also developing guys that were drafted way lower that were understood to have that potential. So I give Tampa Bay a lot of credit and of course not having to spend a lot of money, which I love it's such a pure part of the game but also developing within the organization at the younger levels yeah their front office can manage my portfolio any day sure. they, they do more with less it certainly seems <laughs> Jessica outside of the Rays for people that are just kind of waking up and realizing oh we're you know three weeks into the baseball season here it's a long season we're only one tenth through but uh, outside of the Rays give us some of the big headlines some of your big takeaways from what you're seeing so far in terms of stories and also how the rules have kind of changed the game that we know and love. Yeah, you just nailed it. <laughs> it's like, um, so no one, if you haven't watched baseball yet this season, especially going live, um, and I think everyone, I mean, the 162 games, you need to just get to a game anyway, just because it's one of the best things you can do in the summertime, spring, to be able to go sit in the sun and watch a game. But one of the things that's going to blow your mind is the pitch clock. And I think a lot of people were paying attention if they're not baseball fans, but they're flipping the channels. And all of a sudden you see this giant clock, something that did not exist in the sport for 150 years is here. And it is here to stay. Now we're seeing game times go down by almost 30 minutes and you feel it. I mean, I've been calling games. I've been at games. It is awesome. And the reason I say that is it's not cutting 30 minutes of baseball. It's cut 30 minutes of just all the BS, like a pitcher walking around the mound, staring at the thing, maybe throwing down a first base. All that is gone away. They just get the ball and go. And we're actually seeing more action because the bases are bigger. Another rule change, four and a half inches now closer between first and second and second and third. Stolen bases are up almost 30%. Success rate. You'll watch a game and everyone's stealing. We've seen four guys already steal home. Like it's been yeah. so fun. And the shift has gone away, which to be honest, I was skeptical, skeptical of. I actually really liked the shift, but now I've changed my views because I'm seeing the classic base hit up the middle, finally go up the middle and not get caught. So this is something that's helped more hits more offense the baseball game is better with these these rule changes but jessica what am i going to do if i can't adjust my batting gloves four times per <laughs> bat if i can't <laughs> retighten my gloves after taking between a pitch. every pitch what yeah. how can i be expected to uh i want to know though i mean because this is all done in the name of trying to make the game more palatable to the viewer at home right so how do you gauge that and and do you feel like it's effective already I do feel like it's effective because all the ratings have gone up from the television side. I, I, I mean, I've got two young boys at home. They've already been to five games. They've stayed the whole game. That's never happened yeah. before. <laughs> like, I mean, and their mom's in the business. Like, I, you know, I'm getting them seats that can be played. Like, there's all this access and they're still like fifth, sixth inning, three hours in. They're like, I'm out. And my husband's like, I'm out, you know? So that to me, I know it's a small sample size within even my own family, but the fact that you're able to see them want to stay because that games are like two hours and 15 minutes, two hours and 20 minutes, and it's exciting. And then the game is getting to that ninth inning, which is the best part of the game. You're seeing closers come in, the big music, the fireworks, all the stuff. And it's happening now in a much quicker pace. Do On that note, do you feel like, and I know MLB said that it will tweak the pitch clock rules as the season goes along, if it sees a need to. In those big moments you talked about there, ninth innings, especially when we're getting late season, would you like to see some relaxing of the pitch clock time or standard to allow for those big moments where there's a, you know, there's a tying run at the plate build the drama that's actually a really good question i think where i've at least seen early on the only problem that i've had with it um is not so much that i don't want the pitcher or i want that moment but actually that the hitter has to be attentive that's like the rule engage with the pitcher at eight seconds and there's times when i feel like you know they're doing their thing i mean shoot cody bellinger got pegged with violation returning to dodger stadium he got a standing ovation and he took it in for a moment and he got pegged with a ball <laughs> like it was strike. and yeah. i was like come on what are we doing so to me i think still have the clock but maybe before you hit start 
you know, the, the people that are in the stadium that are actually starting the pitch clock, maybe you do recognize the moment. If everyone's on their feet and it's building, maybe just wait five more seconds before you hit play. Yeah. And that clock's getting rolling. Um, because I do feel like that's such an important part, especially late in the game. It is good to know the new baseball rules. It's also good to know the financial rules for getting along in life. Uh, Jessica, it is financial literacy month. So where can folks go to find out a little bit more info? Yeah, well, I told you about the game, how not to suck at money. I mean, rolling in some Joe Maddox, which uh, exactly. I love. Yeah. Make sure. Yes, and you guys need to go play this too because I've played it. It's a lot of fun. You can find it at hntsam.com. That's how not to suck at money is the game. Invest go QQQ and go have some fun. Invite your family and friends and get competitive. Very good. She is Jessica Mendoza. Thank you for so much for joining us on the show today. Thank you. Thanks, Jessica. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Chris. You know, Chris, it wasn't that long ago that we interviewed Joe Madden and his How Not to Suck at Baseball. Yeah. And now we interviewed Jessica, and it's How Not to Suck at Money. Which is and more with, valuable to us than well, baseball. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if it's – if maybe this is like um, – you know, kind of going to inspire our first book that we write together, How Not to Suck at Podcasting. I well, mean, this is... <laughs> I've already put in my info in this How Not to Suck at Money website, and it says, step one, don't do a podcast for free. <laughs> so we're already <laughs> sucking at money. Uh, well, I, I don't know if it's free. Uh, I think we work for the uh, admiration of... Um, you're right, it is for free. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. <laughs> All right, it's time to get into uh, something that is not free, but it's well worth the cost of admission, and that is the hottest ticket in town, the Savannah Bananas, coming to uh, to George Steinbrenner Field for uh, a, a two-night show. Yeah. So, And you, you have to go out and see it. If you have an opportunity, if you know somebody that has an extra ticket, man, uh, be nice to them and see if they'll let you come because it's going to be well worth it. Time now for our next guest, the pitcher of said Bananas. Well, coming up on Saturday, the 29th, the baseball phenomenon known as the Savannah Bananas are coming to Tampa. Uh, good luck finding tickets. It's the hottest ticket in town, so look out, Taylor Swift. Uh, joined now by the pitcher of the Bananas, Kyle Luigs. And Kyle, all your home dates have been sold out since this thing started. Now you guys do this world tour. Does it feel like, I don't know if anybody knows what it feels like to be a member of the original Beatles, uh, but do you feel like maybe it's a little bit of Beatles treatment when you guys are going town to town? Um, definitely. I think, uh, Beatles was a little bit before my time. Um, but I can definitely, uh, appreciate and respect the analogy. Um, yeah, we've been to seven cities outside of Savannah so far. And I think it's, you know, no pun intended, but they've definitely rolled out the yellow carpet everywhere that we've went. Nice. And, uh, everybody's been so, so excited for it. And it's been, it's been cool and it's been a really cool uh change of scenery almost just because most of the people that we're playing in front of in in these new cities you know i'd probably say 90 percent of that sold out crowd is, is people that are coming to one of our games for the first time um so there's just a, a lot of different energy in the air and and it, and it makes it really fun to play in front of well the way i try to describe you guys and you can correct me if this description is not appropriate or fair but i, I say you're basically the harlem globetrotters of baseball is that right <laughs> Uh, yes, we've actually been getting that a lot, and it's and it's so flattering to be compared to something as great as as what the Harlem Globetrotters were, and and I think that that's our main goal. Um, just without you know strictly scripting the outcome of the game, and and how things are going to go, and trying to keep continue to push that boundary. Um, like we'll do six to to ten new things every night, entertainment wise, that we've never tried before in front of a live audience. Mm. Um, so I definitely think that there's things that, you know, set us apart from them, but I think it, at the end of the day, you know, they wanted to bring the fun back to the sport of basketball and we're trying to do the same exact thing in 2023 with the sport of baseball. Yeah. I'm sure that you grew up, yeah, dreams of playing big league baseball. I, I know you played collegiately at, J at Jacksonville state. Um, and, and you took your training in the game of baseball, probably pretty seriously. So how did this opportunity come about for you? I know you've been with the team since 2018, but when did that get on your radar and how did you know it was kind of for you? Um, yeah. So started at the university of North Georgia, um, which is about six hours away from home here in, in Richmond Hill. And, um, really after my, my freshman year of school ball at North Georgia, I went off and played summer ball directly after the season was over. Didn't even get to go home and went and played in Newmarket, Virginia. Um, mm -hmm. so pretty much the whole year I wasn't at home. 
and got pretty homesick. We played that whole summer. I got to go home for like a week, and then I had to report back up for, for my sophomore year up in North Georgia. Um, so whenever the time came around for, for asking where people wanted to play um, that following summer, I think my first instinct was, you know, I want to go home. I would like to be home for like an extended amount of time. And if I could play baseball and be at home at the same time, that'd be perfect. Yeah. Um, and that was right around the time whenever the bananas were like first starting to merge on the scene and, uh, had a conversation with my coach. Uh, he ended up getting me and my catcher at North Georgia, a temporary contract to come down here and play in the summer of 2018. Uh, little did we know that it was a two day contract. Um, so we were kind of on the chopping block as soon as we got down here, but you know, I guess somebody liked us and liked our smile or liked our enthusiasm and willing to dance and, and playing pretty good baseball at the same time. Cause that was 2018. Now we're here, here we are working full time in 2023. So you mentioned the banana, banana ball. I mean, this is, it is baseball and obviously you guys are, are skilled at what you do, but there are, there is a different set of rules. Can you explain in brief? what banana ball is versus typical baseball rules um yeah it's pretty much straight up baseball with just a little bit of tweaks um that brings it from your grandpa's sport to the entertainment that people want to see nowadays um so each inning counts as a run it's pretty much set up like match play like tennis um so there's never really any blowouts you know if the if the visiting team goes out and puts up six runs in the first inning and the bananas score one it's not six to one going into the second. It's just one to nothing. Batters can't step out of the box. If they do, it's a strike. Um, that's probably one of my favorite rules. Yeah. I just kind of help speed up the game. There's a two hour time limit. If a fan catches a foul ball, it's an out. Love that one. Um, there are no walks. There are sprints. So on ball four, um, all fielders in the field have to touch the ball before it becomes live and the runner can run <laughs> as many bases as he can before that happens. Sounds like Major League Baseball is at least kind of cherry picking some rules because I know they're trying to speed the game up and that two hour time limit uh, maybe is one of those things or the mound visits. Um, but mentioning big leaguers, I mean, when you guys are out on these world tours, it's not uncommon for uh, some former big leaguers to kind of join you, right? I mean, Johnny Damon, Dustin Pedroia, uh, Eric Burns was a, a sit in skipper for you guys. Is that kind of cool? What, what kind of feedback are you getting from from these big league guys on what you guys are producing? Yeah, it's definitely cool. You know, we've had we've we've gotten to play with a couple guys that I didn't even imagine I would ever see in real life, and letting alone get to share the field and play on the same team with them has been incredible. I think um, Arizona this two weekends ago was probably the biggest turning point for us, where we were kind of getting to realize that like on a bigger scale, um, just because there's so many big like big league guys out there. If we had um, you know Luke Jackson was in the dugout with us, mm. like you said, we had Dustin Bedroya, Johnny Gomes is there. Um, Johnny Damon, bunch of just bunch of guys that you know you never think that you'd be in close um, contact with or, or get to get to hang out with them for you know thirty minutes to an hour and just chit chat. But um, all their takes on it have been incredible, which is you know the the one one of the best feelings ever. And and one of the things that I think they realize is is the coolest part about it is you know they get to these games they see. You know, they'll see a clip or two on our social medias or across, you know, whatever news station or something be like, wow, that's really crazy. Um, not have any, you know, hard thoughts against what we're doing on the baseball field because it is untraditional. Um, but they get to come to see these games in person. And the first thing that most of them say, which is my favorite thing, is they're like, wow, I had no idea how good the baseball is. And that's that's what I think is kind of the coolest takeaway to have from them. It's like, okay, I know that these guys are really entertaining and they're putting on a show for these people, which is what the game of baseball needs. But they're also not disrespecting it in a way that these guys can actually really play baseball. Yeah, putting it all on display, making baseball fun, yeah. and, uh, of course, drawing in that young audience. So you guys are coming to town, uh, going to be playing at George Steinbrenner Field, the Yankees Complex here in Tampa on the 29th, a Saturday night, 7 o'clock. Again, good luck finding tickets, but if you know somebody that has tickets, you need to weasel your way into that because they put on a great show. Kyle Weeks from the Savannah Bananas. Thanks for joining us on the Nod Pod. Yeah, thank you guys so much for having me. I don't know how I'm going to do it, Chris, but I'm going to that Bananas game. I, I got to see this guy in person. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, all right, let's bring BK back in. And uh, BK, I, you know, there's uh, an air of mystery, uh, as you have teased off the top of the show, that we have a mystery guest. The studio does smell a little bit different. It smells it's, like a possum. Is there a possum in there? Is it living in the wall? It could be. So, all right, where is our guest and who is our guest? Should we just... 
let's uh yeah th th this guest started back with the cereal hole debate thing oh okay so this this yeah. guest is connected to the cereal oh cereal no thing, this isn't mr lucky charms is no it? it's not mr lucky okay. charms but he had Tony little, the uh, issues with our seating and stuff like that oh and, well that was only two people yeah well that was, the that was, that was mark or paul <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh, he wanted to come out and so why not let's just bring him on out okay bring out our mystery guest no. and, oh. hey Paul A.D. This is so, this is so oh, bad. We're like digging into the weather office for content. I mean, I, <laughs> hey, I got Hey, what stuff, were you doing back there? I got stuff Is that where the on. weather office You're is? You're lucky there's not a cloud in the sky because I got science to do back in the office. Now I'm oh, here. Hey, be careful. These chairs this is, are. Oh, yeah, just, they, whoa, they don't whoa, want you sliding whoa. all over the place. Are you good? Whoa, whoa. Are you good? Oh, hey, you look Check one, two. Look okay, we're guy. good. The first tie ever yeah. worn on the Yes, non-pod. I feel like I'm way overdressed you for this. You look great, buddy. Or, well, you're, I, or you both are underdressed, one of the two. You know, you look better in person than you I'm do on TV. trying to get myself in a good spot. Yeah, okay. I think you're you I like being in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a delicato <laughs> sandwich. Yes. There we go. For sure. Um, so well, this, by the way, why am I here? Uh, I don't know. We're figuring <laughs> that out. You were a mystery until about 30 seconds ago. My guess is I'm not really sure why I'm here. There's no hurricanes coming. Everything's good. Clear that, skies. This does feel like a little like Anchorman Unite. Like this yeah. is this would would this be a good team? Like if we had Anchor Wars against like uh, Channel Eight or Channel Twenty. Right. Like, so do you think we'd I think be we'd be like a seven a seven point favorite. Yeah. Have you ever snapped a man's suspenders? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Have you ever killed anyone with a trident? Are you, are you referring to anyone in particular? No, I'm just saying. Yeah. No. I'm just trying to. I always look for the weaknesses yes. in my opponent. <laughs> He's the, Brick, he's Brick Tamlin in that scenario. Well, but he's smarter than both of us combined. That's true. So, That's yeah. not true. It's not saying much. I'm, yes. I have the, <laughs> I have the Brick I, IQ. Yeah. Do, do things get as competitive uh, in local weather as they do in, uh, as is made to portray in TV? I mean, it's, it's really, it's when we get into our, our, our season, you know, yeah. June through November is when, when things get dicey. Yeah. When every time a cloud comes off Africa, you know, you're watching it for tropical development and everyone's paying attention to how things play out. Unfortunately, that those days are not far away. Yeah. Well, a month and a half to go. Daily I, I just know when, when when sports guys get together and you probably don't even see like, I don't know if you've seen. Do you see news people out? Do you know other news people? Yeah, in the market? yeah sure. You're covering yeah. the same story. You bump into them. Yeah. Or, or but it's just probably on, super competitive, right? Reporters. No, not, in this, like not in this no. Tampa market. It, it's that way in some other markets I've worked in. But and no. I'm, I'm texting. I mean, I'll be yeah. honest. I'm, I'm texting my friend Bobby Deskins over at Channel 10 on occasion. Dennis at, at, at 28. Yeah. Jeff over Do you at try eight. to throw him off a little bit? A little bit. I say, this hey, is what I'm saying. Hey, I'm going 20%. You should go 60% <laughs> tomorrow. Hey, I always get some. I feel like like every market I've ever worked yeah. in, like the sports guys, um, all they do is get together and complain. Oh, like really? It's just griping well, about their shop. I think people just like to complain. It's not, I don't, I've never had that here because Fox 13 treats me so yeah. well, but like, that's what it's always nice. Save. It's just like, yeah, yeah, nice what save. room <laughs> closet do you live in, and uh, you know how are they treating yeah. you? Anyway, I, I figure we play a game. Do you guys okay. want to play a game? What sure. else would we have Paul here for? Yeah. So we'll play like a round robin game. I will ask the two of you a sports question. Okay. Paul, you will ask the two of us a weather question, and Chris mm. will ask the two of us a news question to kind of see how well we're paying attention, paying attention. how well we know idea. the other people's sphere. Right. You, you want to do that? Yeah, I think that's. I could use it in my daily life because right. often he's doing weather. And right, I'm, you're doing weather and, and you're leaving. And I'm, you're, you're yeah. in this, you're, you're, I'm having you're, a snack and not you're listening to You're back by the you. loading dock. Whatever yeah. you're doing back there, I'm not really sure. So I will, if you don't mind, I'll, <laughs> I'll start. It doesn't look like pra, Paul brought any uh, notes. So he's probably, <laughs> he needs a little time to think of his yeah. first question. Okay. And we'll just kick it around as long okay. as we can. As yeah. long as we can. All right? All right. There we go. First question. What is Tom Brady's full name? Oh. What's his middle name? Do you want to go first? <laughs> oh, wait. Are we working together? I think you guys are you, got do to Do we have to work together? No, we're competing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Thomas. That's it's like Edward. Yes. Patrick. Yes. Brady. Is there Tom, something it's like else? There's, there's, four, there's four words in there. Thomas, four Edward, names. Patrick, Brady. Thomas, Patrick, Edward, Brady or something? Or Look, I, is, I'm, I'm, not on your, very, I'm very, not on your team. You're not? We're not doing this no, together? This is, oh. BK, should we give it to him? Uh, I don't think that's going to get it done, guys. <laughs> Uh, Thomas Edward Patrick Edward. Brady would be the name of his father. He is Thomas Edward yeah. Patrick Brady Jr. Oh. Very close, but no cigar. That all is right. so weird. Uh, okay. Chris, would you like to ask your news question? Oh, I needed to prepare these. Um, all right, let's go. Uh, okay, easy one off the top. 
Uh, and I want you to both have an answer, so don't try to work together on it, okay? Okay. Like you just did. Yeah, exactly. Like just did. Right. I was trying to tell him not to work with me. I'm new on this. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a guest. I'm a surprise yeah, guest. I, know. I don't know the uh, rules. Have you ever done a podcast before? Never in my life. Really? Yeah. You should. Probably this will be the first and last. Oh. You could start one today yes. and you'd have a million more subscribers so? than we do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, here we go. What city did Democrats choose to host their presidential nominating convention in 2024? Uh, just recently it, announced. Was it? Um, oh, it hasn't happened yet. Houston? No. Uh, I'm going to go Kansas City. Mm. Why? <laughs> Why? Why would they do it in Kansas City? Uh, it's not, can you that's where the, fi- that's okay. where the final four was. Can you give so us a I hint? Uh, I can't. Well, um, what are they known? What's the city known for? I would say I, here, this, is gonna, this is going to give it away, but oh, one of boy. the star speakers that Chicago. they would love to have. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, for bonus points, oh, hey. bonus points. Okay. Last hosted the DNC in '96. Obama. The, the nominee no. was okay. in '96. Democratic. That nominee. was Walter Mondale. Oh my gosh, uh, your loss. '96. Uh, uh, Who was president in '96? That was George H. W. Oh, Huh? Bill Clinton. You guys Bill are Clinton. hopeless. Bill Clinton. <laughs> Bill Clinton. Right. Bill Clinton. Right, Bill Clinton. Right, okay, now, there. Okay. All right. Now the real tough questions. Give us a weather question. Ready? Paul. Thank you. Okay. What year? Oh boy. Was the blizzard of '78? <laughs> uh, see, I think this is a true question. I'm going to go 79. Yeah, because they were really it started, bad. It started <laughs> off the coast of Africa <laughs> and came across. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it took, took a minute. A, yeah. yeah. Or that was the year they were really awful at keeping records. Yeah. All their calendars blew away. Let me think another one then. What is the driving mechanism behind our <laughs> oh <laughs> that, behind our sea breeze thunderstorms? Uh, I'm gonna say <laughs> you just wanted to say mechanism. I know what you did. The driving mechanism behind <laughs> our sea breeze what thunderstorms oh, oh my in the gosh. summer? I'm gonna say uh, warm water. The I'm- sea breeze. Oh, oh geez. I'm so Are all dense. these questions going to be like this? All right, and now back to the person with the real questions. All right, here we go. What is the name of the stadium Penn State plays football in? This uh, is a trick question. Chris, you're a college football uh, fanatic. Mm-hmm. Come on. Well, they call it Happy Valley, but that's not the no. name of the stadium. Correct. It is. Is it some bank? No, it's not. It's, it's an, not named after a. It's uh, an animal name. It's Beaver Stadium. It is it's Beaver, Beaver Stadium. Stadium. Yeah. All right. Chris. The Oregon State Beavers don't play there, oddly. All right. So you guys are big. You watch the stock market, right? Mm-hmm. So here we go. A little finance question. In March, inflation rose 5% year to year, which is an improvement, yeah. slowing down a little. In which category did prices show the largest increase from Feb to March? A, eggs. I went multiple choice because this could be tough. A, eggs. B, used cars. C, airfare. D, jelly beans. Well, uh, I'm going to go eggs. I'm going to go. I'll go airfare. You got it. Airfare up 4%. People booking those spring break trips. It's expensive to fly now. Sure is. It is. Eggs are expensive, too. Especially on Southwest Airlines today. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Are you trying to get out of (laughs) town? Bad scene. (laughs) Paul, do you have another question for us? Um, Let me think here. Weather question. How about um, this guy came in no material? Came in with no stuff. I mean, the <laughs> thing is, my, my head is full of meteorological tidbits, but I'm not Just, sure. How really about like interested. words? Uh, dew point. Dew point is uh, at the time of night when I go to the <laughs> cantina to get a Mountain Dew. <laughs> oh, uh, could you use it? Well, in a hold this. Why is the dew point important? Because we, we talk humidity. about the dew point a lot. Yeah. It's humidity, right? Right. I've recently I. For years, I had no idea what the DPT was. The DPT. And now I'm a big fan of the DPT, the, DPT. the, dew, the dew point track. It is, it is the temperature that you cool air to the point that it becomes 100% saturated. So um, the lower the dew point. All right, I'm already bored. Let's move the, on to the next the more, question. The more comfortable it is. Today is a <laughs> low dew point today. Right. Today's yeah. a low dew point. The temp is still in the, in, the high, su- right? in the summertime, what is a, cl- is a typical, give me a typical. 85. A July dew point temperature. Upper 70s, uh, higher 70s. Mid, mid to upper 70s, yeah, right. sometimes. That's yeah. one thing I've learned from you. If yes. it gets, when it gets around 75, 70, it starts it's, to it's get, get oppressive. Yeah. No, right. thank you. Okay. Sports question. How much time do we have on this? BK, you cut us off when it's time. What is an albatross? It's um, it's either when you're above a, bo- above a double bogey or triple, is it, it's a, it's a golf. Yeah, it's a golf thing. It's, it's a, a golf, golf thing. It's a golf term. It's also a, a sea like animal, an eight? I believe. Uh, no, that's a think the other it's way. A, also, it's it's below um, below a, a an eagle, so it's it's the one below the eagle. It's two below par. 
It is three under three below. par, so below. also known as a double eagle, double eagle. but it's also called yeah. an albatross. Why yeah. can't they just pick one? Eagle, double I know it's eagle, one of the two. albatross. So albatross yeah. is good. No, very it sounds good. bad, but yeah. it's actually good. It, yeah, you, have, you don't you want have an albatross, albatross growing on your neck. It sounds bad, but it's actually the best thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get this you're albatross. Out, you're out doing on. albatrosses all day. Yeah. You're having a good day. Yeah. <laughs> Big uh, wingspan on those birds. Yeah, Chris, do you have one? I do. I got one more. Let's see what you guys want to go. Let's do this. A little pop culture, since you guys weren't so much on the you know politics. Um, what show ended its record-breaking 35-year Broadway run this past Sunday night? Cats. No. But same composer as Cats. Okay. Um, not that at all. Uh, what's the one where they... No, there's no... It's there's not no, the it's Jets not, and the Sharks. The it's Jets. not Wicked. Wicked's too good. No, this one's been on there for, well, since 86, 35 uh, years. Phantom of the Opera. You got it. There we Phantom go. of the Opera. That is yeah. a good That is a good, good show. I've never yeah. seen it. What's that? Have yes. you seen it on Broadway? It is so good. Yeah. It was so good. I heard the chandelier, it got yeah, a standing O yes. at the last performance. It falls it, in every and show. It zooms okay. out. It's, it, is, it is good quality stuff. That's I shit. think I think Mark Wilson's brother was, was in the movie. And there's a movie of was. a fan of the opera, and he was in that. Why hasn't he done this podcast? We need to be, he can I'm be sure he head. would. Do you think he'd be prepared with questions if we had yeah. him on one of these segments? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> All right, do you, Paul, do you have one more weather question for us? Um, okay. Uh, okay, we're under a tornado warning. Mm, okay, I what is those. the best place to be in a, in a house during a tornado warning? Uh, not in Chris's ramshackle, that's for sure. <laughs> not not in, structurally sound. That, not in my Winnebago. Yes. No, not in the van uh, down by the river. I think it's in a tub with a mattress over you. I hear you say this, an interior room that does not have windows. Right, away from... Any any interior room that does not have uh, obviously a window or is not attached to the uh, an outside view at all right. away from windows is a car a safe place to be during a tornado? I, I wouldn't. Mm. I've seen them spinning around in wind, so I wouldn't think so. Well, no. is the car moving away from the tornado? <laughs> yeah. Then yeah. Escaping in a car is not a good. Or are you really? that? Remember yes. the truck? The guy in the truck a couple years ago. He went through it. Right. And rolled and. Did Remember that fine. guy? Yeah. Whatever happened to that He's guy? He's the he one the guy. Red. He was the one guy that was okay. He's the one guy. Yeah. He okay. won the lottery. Yeah. And they gave him had. a new truck. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He, they did. Well, I like the way that your questions actually provided some viewer benefit. Right. You just yes. gave life-saving information, whereas Scott and I were just, just talking about Beaver Stadium. Albatross. Well, yeah, when you Beaver need Beaver an Stadium. albatross removed from your neck, then you will know who to talk to. All right. Fine. All right. Well, uh, it was, was fun. It, that was it. Was fun to have it you pop definitely. out of that room back there. I didn't know that's where the weather. Do I have to leave through the same door? No, you're not you're going sure. anywhere. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> it, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, congrats uh, to uh, the Savannah Bananas who are coming to town and are yeah. sold out for two mm. shows. We had Jessica, Man Jessica Mendoza on the show mm. today, and um, and we also had Polly D. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Paul Delegato oh, giving MBK. us a little bit now of an I got, education. Now I get a taste. I want to come back. You're I want to get back. Yeah, well, you, can, get, you can boot this back? guy out anytime you want. <laughs> this chair <laughs> rolls. <laughs> All right, very good. Uh, make sure you check out the show. Go to fox13news.com slash nodpod. All the shows are located there. The QR code is on the screen. Uh, much thanks to our guests, our production crew, BK in the booth. Until the next time we are on, there are no off days. This Go, is, Bolts. We, yeah, we Go Bolts. We wave, Paul. Yep.